There was a terrible thing that happened in this house. And I just constantly lived in fear. I'm grabbing at straws trying to make sense of the things that happened in this house. So you're frightened? Yes. Whatever was lurking there then is still there. This woman's energy is trapped in this house. She's not taking no for an answer. I'm not going down there. You don't want to go, right? I would feel someone touch my arm. She goes wherever you go. Oh. Who is it? This is the moment you've been waiting for. And I don't want to do anything you're uncomfortable with. My name is Kim Russo, and I am a psychic medium. When I was nine, I was visited by the first of many dead people who wanted to communicate with the living through me. Realizing that I couldn't ignore my abilities, I chose to embrace them. Many people are haunted by traumatic paranormal events buried in their past. Some of these people have faces you might recognize. You've heard about their paranormal experiences. Now you are about to witness the moment they take me back to the place of the haunting in the hopes of uncovering the truth. This is the haunting of Sally Struthers. We're in West Los Angeles in a section that's referred to as Brentwood. It was an interesting 18 years in this big old house. The house I lived in has a lot of Hollywood history and there was a lot of happiness in the house except for the ghost, which scared everybody. We're headed to see Sally Struthers. She's best known for her acting role as Gloria Stivic in the long-running sitcom, All in the Family. She has a lot of questions about unusual activity that took place when she lived there. Based on what I'm feeling, it's a big possibility that whatever was lurking there then is still there. This could be something that I might have to really amp up my protection for. came to Hollywood, became a successful actress. Carol O'Connor, who played my father and all the family, introduced me to a doctor. I wound up marrying him. And then, unbeknownst to me, he wanted to live in a mansion. And one day said, dress the baby up. By now, my daughter was about 12 months old, Samantha. And he said, we're going to go look at a house in Brentwood. The day that my husband and I met the owner of the home, she showed us around the whole house. And I'll never forget that she walked us to show us this very large kitchen. And on the way in the kitchen, she said, just make sure this door is always locked. And I said, well, what's in there? And she said, well, it's stairs down to a cellar. I said, OK, I'll always keep it locked. We moved in. And in less than a year, my marriage was over. Here I was living in this huge home. And I've never liked being alone. I like to have hubbub around me. So I made sure that right away, I filled all those bedrooms with anyone that needed a place to live. And my house just filled up. 
well, one of the kids that moved in with me and wound up staying five, six years, she said, there was a woman in the hallway near my bedroom last night. I said, well, what woman? Who, somebody, one of our friends? No, there, it was, she wasn't a full woman. I could sort of see through her, but I could see her completely. It was a ghost. And I tried to discount it. This young lady telling me this probably drank too much wine last night or just has a very vivid imagination. But over a period of months, other people started saying to me, who is that woman in the hallway? Have you seen that woman? We see this woman sometimes in the hallway. This ghost, and it was always at night, of course, would go into Samantha's room. Things would move in Samantha's room. And it frightened her terribly. I knew that it was a reality that came with the house. There is a ghost. And I just kept saying to God at night in my prayers, please, please don't let me see her. I'll die. And then it started to happen to me. It was when I was in my pajamas, alone, barefoot, in the kitchen, no one else downstairs in the kitchen. I would feel something touch my arm. I would feel a cold wind go by my legs, and there wasn't a window open anywhere. I would run. Thank God there were always other people in the house to run to and say, oh my God, I just felt her, she just touched me. I know I felt this cold around me that had nothing to do with the temperature. And I knew she was there, and it constantly freaked me out. And sometimes I was in the master bedroom suite of the house, and there wasn't a TV or a radio on, and I would very softly hear her say my name. Sally. That's such a scary thing when there's nobody there, but there's somebody there. Sally. And I can hear her. Oh, God, no. This is not good. I believe that. This ghost, this young woman, really wanted me to know she was there. And she respected me and didn't appear to me, but she did everything else. She touched me, she talked to me. And I don't like being scared. And I just constantly lived in fear. Today will be the first time I've ever been back there in 16 years, 15 and a half years. I want to ascertain whether or not this spirit is still in this home that I lived in for so many years. If she's there, I hope that there's something that Kim can say or do to facilitate the spirit moving on because I believe this woman's energy is trapped in this house or she's staying for a reason. As I'm approaching this home and the visions that I keep getting, this energy that I'm sensing, and it's, it's not just one energy, it's coming across to me almost like a swirl of energy. I'm having a hard time distinguishing because I feel a spirit of a man, but yet I also feel a very strong presence of a, of a woman. The man comes across to me as someone that doesn't very easily let, let his guard down. The more now that I, I sense this woman, she's really trying to get the spotlight, and she really wants to be heard. She's very loud. I 
promise her I'm going to be all ears when I get there. <laughs> and she's not taking no for an answer. She's just not listening to me. And that, that, that could be a little ugly. Here we are. Guess this is it, huh? Let's see what this is all about. This house is not what I expected. It's beautiful, but yet a little spooky at the same time. I want to go around the back if I can. I hope nobody minds that I'm taking my own tour. This is quite the backyard. I see tables. I see women in long dresses. I'm hearing, like, almost like big band music, that, that era, that time frame. There had to be some fancy parties that took place here at one time. But that woman from the car, she's with me still. As happy as it may have been during the party times, that's as, as terrifying as I feel what went on behind closed doors. So you're frightened? Yes. A woman just joined us. I feel like you brought her with you. as it may have been during the party times. That's as, as terrifying as I feel what went on behind closed doors. But I can't assume anything. I have to wait till Sally gets here. I'm experiencing some palpitations, you know? My, my palms are sweating right now, just knowing that in a few minutes, I'm going to be walking in that house. And knowing that we're going there to rustle up this ghost. <laughs> the gates are on the left. There. Wow. Are you Kim? Hi, I'm Kim, yes. I've seen you on television Hi, many, many times. Sweetheart. Hi, sweetheart. How are you, Anna? I'm good. So how long has it been since you've been back here? 15 and a half years, 16. Oh, wow. Yeah, a long, long time. Th oh, whatever is going on behind those walls. I like to see myself as someone who's also helping whatever souls might be lost or trapped in there. That's what I want. Because even though there are new owners here, the energy may be trapped. I'm excited to maybe get some closure and this entity to move on. I, that would be the perfect outcome. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that it, if this entity in any form appears, you're the only one to see it, because otherwise you better know CPR. So you're frightened? Yes. OK. Well, we have some energies that have already joined me, and they've been with me since I drove up into, in the car. So there, there were a few people that are already trying to get my attention. Do all of them have something to do with this house or just with my life? That's what I don't know yet. I am completely open to hearing what you find out, because I'm, I'm in the dark. I, OK. I'm, I'm grabbing at straws trying to make sense of the things that happened in this house. There was a lady with me in the car, and she's still with me. Whatever this is, it's, it's an active energy. It's very active. It's not something that's going to back down easy. That I can tell you. Once I open that door, I think we'll have a pretty good idea of, of what it is we're dealing with. This is the moment you've been waiting for, OK? 
Let's do this. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. Energy-wise, how did you feel when you walked in? I'm back. I'm, it's Samantha, I'm home. And Samantha is your daughter? Yeah. So she lived here as a young child? Yes. Why don't we start in here? This looks like a sitting room. What, it's what, a what, living room, oh. and it's exactly the same. You used it for that purpose as well? Yes. It's exactly the same. You know, Sally, a woman just joined us. Um, actually, there's two women that just joined us. Uh, I feel they're very connected to your life. And one woman, in her later years, she, she, uh, the best way I can describe it to you is I, I'm very dizzy a lot of the times and I, and I, I, I know what I want to say, but I, I can't find the words. So she was confused, this woman. Like, she had a memory lapse of some sort. She knew her loved ones, but I don't feel she was able to connect the words with the, with the, with the memory. D do you know who that might be? Yeah, my mom. <laughs> I feel like you brought her with you, and she goes wherever you go. Huh. I really do. Are you prepared? Because she looks, she's making me feel like she wants to have a conversation with you. I miss her terribly. Okay, I know it's it's emotional. We need tissues. Tissues are on their way. Sorry. Oh, awesome, awesome. <laughs> okay. She says she'll know it's me if you go like this, like with a cigarette. Most of her life, she said. But then she said, and this is important to to get across to you. Don't have any guilt. There are certain things I feel like you needed to do to keep your mother safe in those days where she wasn't able to help herself. So I kind of feel like taking the cigarettes away was one of them. Um, I see car keys. We have to take the car keys away. We can't really let this woman cook for herself, you know, because she didn't have the wherewithal. I recognize all of this. My father had Alzheimer's. This is very familiar to me. And I can see what this is. It's the same thing that my family went through. I really feel that there's gonna be a big message in, in this whole day. I just don't know. I'm just starting. I'm just living in the moment and going with it. Um, I also want to tell you the lady she's with, she has a sister with her. I just asked that lady her name. It's a very short name. Three letters. I feel three letters. <laughs> yes. Give me a second. I, 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 yeah, I. It's like Ida, Ida. Is that her name? Wow. Yes. I know. You sure you're okay? Yes. She's so happy to be here. Oh, she's always happy to be everywhere. She's so happy to be here. She's the happiest human being. You want to walk a little so yeah. you, you can breathe a little bit? Yeah. Oh, I'm just so glad that they're together. They're real, yeah, that's the first thing your mom wanted to show me when when she came across to me. She wanted to show me she was with her sister. And hold on a minute. There's something else she just said. Oh, she's talking about your daughter. By any chance, is your daughter a doctor? Does she work in the medical field? Yes. She just said. Your daughter works with the mind? Yes. In, in, in like a psychiatrist, a psychologist? Yes, clinical psychologist. Okay. Uh, she was very proud of her that she followed through. You know, I have to tell you something. You said your daughter was present in this home when you lived here with all this activity. Yeah. That weighed heavy on her. Your mother's telling me this. Oh, yeah. It did affect her deeply. Deeply. She was afraid all the time. Does she know you're doing this today?
You know something? This house is starting to fill up. She wants to be heard. You said your daughter was present in this home when you lived here with all this activity. Yeah. That weighed heavy on her. Your mother's telling me this. Oh, yeah. Does she know you're doing this today? Yes, she didn't want any part of it. Well, see, that tells me that it just might have really rattled her it when did. she lived here. So you want to explore the rest? You're, how are you? Sure. They pushed it way out to there. Oh, you mean the kitchen was not this no, big? No, no, it's more than twice as big. Oh, wow, this is beautiful. Sally, you know, I was exploring the property prior to you arriving, mm -hmm. and that is the, the area where I was getting these flashbacks and all these visions of people walking around with trays of food, like big, giant parties and I was picking up live band music. And the man that built this house, he had his own movie studios, Jesse Lasky. He oh. probably had huge studio parties here. OK. I and bet they had big bands playing. And not only that, it's like this, that old Hollywood feel, right? Yes. Uh, because this lady I'm looking at right now, uh -huh. she's very beautiful, very elegant. Her hair is perfect. Her, she's wearing a very pretty dress. She's not a go trapped ghost, though, at all. And honestly, she lived here because she seems to know the floor plan very well. I, I, I only know her as a glamorous woman. Rita Hayworth. This was her home. The actress Rita Hayworth? Yes, this was her home. I don't believe she's the ghost you encountered. She's a nice woman. She just came back because she knows I'm here, and I'm a medium, and I can talk. I can understand their language. Yeah. But I still get that that old-fashioned sense when I when I come in here, you know, because I'm going back in time. Uh, there was a hint of a man. He's been with me since I drove up in the car. And he's somewhat showing himself to me today, but I'm noticing he's staying in the background mostly. But I don't think he's going to stay in the background too long. He's waiting to come forward to speak to me, but he won't do it as long as your mother's in the front. I don't understand that. Are you saying it's someone that passed? Yes. But I... He's waiting for the floor all to himself. OK. You know something? I have to tell you, this house is starting to fill up. That loud lady is back again. From earlier in the car, she keeps like coming in and out of my, my vision. Wait a minute, hold on. Whoever this woman is, this is the space where she used to try to get your attention quite a bit. You have memories of, um, I want to say like things flying out or gusts of wind. I always felt cold air going by my legs. That's typical of ghost activity. They can move things, which, by the way, this lady moved things on you. I just saw, I just saw her do that. She loved to play with makeup. <gasps> That's what she just showed me. She loved to play with your makeup. I see that, that that's striking something with you. Yes. This was this, this ghost. So was she the one that scared my daughter all the time? Yes. This woman really fed off of your daughter's innocence. She told me that she tried to get your attention many, many times. Who is it? I'm going, believe me, I'm 
Does it have to be someone I knew in my life? Absolutely not, no. She may be connected to something in this home or connected to one of the previous owners. It could be that. OK. I just asked her her name. Hi, you know what? She's cooperating with me. That, that's, that's a little bit of a good sign. And she says, you can call me Evie, but my name is Evelyn. That's what she said. You don't need to know who she is. I'm going to find out who she is. I'm going to find out who she is. Where your makeup is, was that up on the second floor? Hmm. Because she's trying to show me upstairs. She's trying to bring me upstairs. Hold on a second. This is the Evelyn lady. She very often walked up and down these hallways when you lived here. That's what she's telling me. Um, and I keep also feeling that she still dwells here, to be honest. There's a bedroom. I kind of feel like it's the master bedroom. Yes. You felt a presence when you were about to drift off to sleep. I've many times felt cold air around me. And the thing that I found most disturbing is sometimes I would feel someone just touch my arm. And that completely freaked me out. Oh, I'm back in my old bedroom. I never closed that door when there was, there was a much smaller doorway there. And I never closed it because I, I wanted people to be able to hear me if I yelled down the hallway. I was scared because of the activity going on in this house. And hmm. I would very softly hear her say my name. And it would just freak me out. Well, I will tell you something. Uh, yeah, that, that Evelyn, that was her. She wants to be heard, like, like her voice wants to be heard. I feel she still does. But I'm also sensing that this is a man that was standing with your mother earlier, but didn't identify himself. This man is moving forward. Sally, I feel, I feel as if your father's here. I feel a dad energy coming forward. And I don't know how you feel about starting a conversation with him. Uh, and the only reason I say that be is because what he just gave me the feeling of is it's been a very, very long time. And <sighs> I don't want to do anything you're uncomfortable with. I'm not going down there. There was a terrible thing that happened in this house. as if your father's here. What he just gave me the feeling of is it's been a very, very long time since you've seen him or talked to him. And he's coming across as, well, please get her permission first. And I don't want to do anything you're uncomfortable with. I really, really don't. So it's OK. It, please, sit down if you need to sit. And it's OK. Uh, wait a second. I'll tell you what I heard. <laughs> what? <laughs> said, I did the best I knew how. And I know. He said he's made it up. Him and your mom have made it OK on the other side. <laughs> he says, 
she has forgiven me. I can't rest until my children forgive me. You're one of his children. Well, does that make I sense? I was 20 when my dad passed away, and my sister was 22. He said, don't talk about when I passed away. He said, I'm not apologizing for dying. I'm apologizing for leaving an at another time. He did. He, he left us when my sister and I were little. And my mom was never the same. And my sister and I had a very sporadic relationship with him and that he was a doctor. We rarely saw him. But what your dad just said to me was, you also married a doctor? I did. I did. And that, I don't want to pry. I do not even want to be right. personal with you. It's all right. But your dad has watched over you all this time, and he talked about, I can't say that your husband walked out on you, but it didn't last either. Exactly. Did you ever put that together? I did. The very thing I said I didn't want to happen came about. I didn't want to have children and have a marriage end. And I had a daughter, and my marriage was over just like it happened to my mom. And a doctor, no less. Now, here's where he's going with this. He's like, your mom has forgiven me, and you're the one he still needs your forgiveness. I stopped speaking to him before he died. You know what? I'm ashamed of myself for having stopped talking to him. Then that's what you need to let go of. Um, give me a second. You wrote a letter to your dad? I did. Where, did you rip it? Where is it? I mailed it to him. <sighs> I need to, I need you to talk about that. I told him how upset I was with him. Why'd you roll your eyes? Because I'm sorry I did that. Right, this is a two-way street. You both have things that you're sorry about, you know? And I just said to him, why are you bringing up that letter? I'm sure it broke his heart. But he understands your point of view. He does, now he does. You know, he's just a little bit sorry that he didn't have that chance to say all this prior to his death. I will give you this. He is admitting his wrongs, whether it be in this life or the afterlife. And when you forgive someone, it gives you your power back. Have a conversation with your dad. Have an ongoing conversation with him. Do it tonight. I commend him. He's not giving up. And you may find he's closer to you from that realm than he ever was. OK. Um, so you have, you have some work to do, Sally. All right, you I'll do it. You have a lot of, like, releasing. I'm uh, just concerned because we're in this house, and there was some a terrible thing that happened in this house. Prior to you living here? Uh-huh. I was told about it from the woman I bought this house from. All right. It might be the person, Evelyn, that keeps talking to you. Evelyn is in this house, but wait a second. Whatever this horrible thing you heard happened in this house, it didn't happen here. No. The basement staircase. That's where the bad thing happened? Uh-huh. We will explore that. We have to find this basement. Honestly, I am sensing that's a spot you didn't go to too often at all. Oh, no. I'm not going down there. You don't want to go, right? Well, I'll stand at the top of the stairs and you tell me if you sense anything. I don't know what's down there, but it wasn't stairs like this. It was like cellar it steps? It was cellars, you know, like boards. The stairs, when they w w went from a doorway over there, just went <clears throat> Right, so like, God forbid someone fell down those steps, they would have been a goner. Well, that's what just, that you just described what happened. Really? I want to hear what you heard. What did you hear about someone falling down the steps? Earlier on in the history of this house, someone was having a party, and some young woman in her alcoholic stupor 
fell down the stairs and broke her neck and died. You know something, Sally? That I just, I don't feel that. That's not what I'm getting. Do you have any idea where this woman got her information? I'm sure from the previous owners. You don't feel it? Not at all. I don't feel that at all here. That's not even what this lady's telling me. This, this uh, Evelyn lady told me, no, 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 no. She's assuring me that there's no ghost here like that. Hold on a minute. <laughs> that Evelyn woman, she keeps saying, I, I didn't deserve to die like that. I didn't deserve. She says, my life ended on a very unexpected note. You know what, Sally? She, she was brutally murdered. She was stabbed and she was choked. It's just so strange she wound up here. I, I feel you were a big part of this. That Evelyn woman, she was brutally murdered. She was stabbed and she was choked. She says, I died at the hand of another. Did she die in this house? No. It looked like this little alleyway is what it looks like the way she's showing it to me. And it, it was a man trying to to rob her. She had nothing but a life. And he robbed that. She, he robbed her life, right. They didn't solve her murder. At one point, there was an uh, investigation going on as, as to how she died. There was a point where they gave up because they had no leads. She didn't, she didn't forgive her killer. And that's keeping her earthbound. Oh, of course. It's just so strange she wound up here. She said she, she stayed here for a, a time, so she knew the house. I feel like she had the best times of her life when she lived in this home. This was a sweet memory for her. She also felt a, a connection with you. See, I feel you were a big part of this, where you both were walking around with this uh, victim mentality. Yes. Like, why me? And I told you, you're going to have to take the rest of the steps to forgive your father. You're ready. And, and to I forgive myself, to forgive my father. But do you see so what many you, things? Do you see what you kind of have in common with Evelyn? She also needs to forgive her killer, her murderer. That's probably a little more difficult to do. Well, why don't we go somewhere and just uh, okay. sit down a little bit, get off our feet, and chat about what we can do to release her. It's a lot to digest. It is a lot. How do you feel after everything that's gone on? I feel like I've been through a lot of emotions today. I really thought I came to find out about this ghost and a completely different thing happened today. Well, what happened today is <laughs> your mom showed up right off the bat. I know. And I have a, a sneaky suspicion that your mom knew your dad was going to approach you today. And I don't feel she wanted you to handle that alone, you see? So she came as a source of support. I think the dad and the, and the releasing of that is, is huge for you. And 
There were some myths put to rest about the woman was not the woman you thought she was. It's a woman who was murdered somewhere in the town. And she's here because she needs somebody to know how she died. But you can relate because you've had things happen to you that you haven't been able to release, maybe up until now. She does look up to you. All right, I'm not scared of her anymore then. No. You saw all of the commonalities that this lady, Evelyn, had with you. Anger, resentment. Well, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to help her with letting go of the victimization of being murdered. What you need to do is lead by example. Do this for you, and she will follow. By watching you forgive and let go of everything that you've been holding on to with your father. Absolutely. I'm trying to find the right words to know that there's someone that can use my help. And if I can get rid of the bad, guilty, angry feelings, there's a huge reason to do it. It's rewarding, isn't it? It is. When we're done here, I am going to do another walk uh, through the house myself, and I will definitely help release this woman. I'm very fortunate that I got to meet you. Uh, well, I feel honored, and it was my pleasure because I feel like I've helped several souls today. Thank you. Please, can I have a hug? Kim had a very kind, loving, but strong way of making me face things that I had not chosen to look at. I carry my father on the inside of my sleeve. I have lots of issues about a life without him and the hurts that he caused my mother and my sister and me and the things I didn't forgive him for. And, and Kim told me that he can't move on unless I let go. And I hear it loud and clear now. Looking back when we met Sally, she was seeking closure to the paranormal events she experienced years ago in her former home in Los Angeles. We found out the spirit who haunted her was a very angry woman who was still resentful about her unsolved murder. Through our journey, Sally realized she also needed to let go of anger and resentment against her late father. And by doing so, she could help both her and the trapped ghosts move on and find peace. We are often called upon to serve as role models for the ghosts that surround us, because whether living or dead, we can never truly be free unless we release the past in order to move forward.